Hi, so we're going to continue with uh, creating the platform game. Today we're going to be adding the jumping uh, technique to the platform game so that they can jump to different parts of the platform. And if we look at our key controls down here, the keys down, uh, what we were working on um, from our past exercise we did have these booleans. We also used these the other day in class with our, I think it was our uh, lives time uh, script. And we used the left and the right already. Now we're going to work on the up. Um, so that's when you push the up arrow and that's going to cause a jump in the character. So if you remember from last time, we also have uh, these if statements in our check direction function that we created. This is an enter frame function. Every single time the enter frames enters the frame, it runs everything that's in this function. Um, and so we already wrote a, a check for whether or not the uh, left arrow is being pressed on. If that left Error, uh, arrow is being trust, uh, pressed on, the left boolean is set to true. Um, if the right arrow is being pressed on, the right boolean is set to true, and it runs these statements. And so now we're going to work on the up. So if the up arrow is pressed on, then the up boolean is going to be set to true. And what do we want this to do? Well, we want the player to make a jump, which means that we're going to have to actually move the player up by a certain number of pixels to give the appearance of jumping. So we'll be talking um, to uh, we'll be talking to our player. Uh, let's see here. What do we call our player again? A oh, player. Okay. So player and that that's along the y axis so we'll be talking to the y axis and wherever he is currently at so it's going to be a plus equals we want to move him up by a certain value so if we want to move him up uh, do we want a positive or a negative value well i know you're all saying negative so Yes, that is what we want. We want a negative value. So, uh, we, and then we want to move the player up by a fairly large amount. So we can choose, why don't we choose 70 for right now. So, when we run this script, what we now have is when the player moves up, and you can see that he can very quickly get off the screen because he's moving, of course, up 70 every single time we press the up arrow or if we just uh, held down, of course, he goes flying up very quickly too. So uh, we don't want the player to necessarily jump a full 70 pixels every time we push the up arrow, uh, especially once we get gravity going on, where the gravity can be pulling down on the on the boy. We um, don't want the uh, ability to be able to jump so far up that the gravity can't overtake the boy. We want the boy not to be able to escape, like falling through the cracks. Um, when we get to the ends of these platforms. So what we want to do is we, every time the up arrow is being pressed, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of eat, we're going to not let him uh, go up quite as far. We're going to recalculate the value that's placed in here. So instead of putting a hard number here, instead of putting this hard minus 70, what we want to do is we want to create a variable that can be redefined every single time we press the up arrow. 
So let's create a variable that we'll call jump height. And then this way we can redefine the jump height every time the up arrow is being pressed. Okay, so we created this variable called jump height. Now let's also, we need to go ahead and declare that at the top as well because we're going to be redefining that value. So let's scroll up to the top and let's create our new private variable called jump height and um, that will be an integer, we'll keep these round numbers and um, we said that we wanted that to be a minus 70 to start with so we'll just go ahead and set that value to minus 70. Okay, now let's go back to our if statement that is checking to see whether or not the up is true. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our redefinition on the jump height. And we're just going to, whatever the current value is, what we're going to do is we're going to add 5 to it. So the next time we press the up arrow, instead of it being negative 70, it'll be negative 65, then we push it again, it'll be negative 60, so it's just not going to let them jump quite the distance every time we push the up arrow, or if we hold it down, it eventually won't let him really jump any further. So, um, and that's, and so that way he eventually will be overtaken uh, when we have the gravity, when we add the gravity. Let's actually just put a couple comments in here. So, this is, um, Recalculating the value of jump height so that uh, he can't escape when comes he can't escape uh, actually he can't escape the gravity and like let him fly around if he wants to and then we'll just say apply the jump height add the jump height add the jump height to the current y position of player. Okay, so um, that's just going to eat in to the the players where the player is um, jumping up they can't just fly off all right before we start adding gravity to our player what we're going to do is we also are going to make it appear like the player is jumping we're going to change the way he looks in our walk cycle he has a position where his legs are kind of spread apart and we can use that uh, for our jump. So we're just going to go ahead and talk to our player, go to and stop, and then we're just going to point to frame one uh, from our player movie clip. As you can see, if we go to our compiler and we look at our boy, you can see actually they're showing the first uh, frame of that movie club and that will work just fine for a jump position. Okay, so we're just pointing to that first frame and so now when we run this and we push the up arrow he is jumping up. Oh, and one other thing to note is that when I did the jump height, um, I actually misspelled private var, so just make sure that you spelled private var correctly when you 
we're doing your jump height. I just want to make sure that you don't get any errors on that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and let's add some gravity to this. If you want to go ahead and create a private variable up at the top um, to so that way you can go ahead and be able to change that gravity amount very easily whenever you need to. Um, it's all in one place. Uh, you know, if you want to change it, jump height, it's just easier to be able to come through here at the beginning and change all these values. Okay, so I'm just going to make this imp. Let's work with some uh, round numbers. Actually, let's make this a number. I, since we are going to be, you know, actually this could get into some decimal numbers. So actually, we better go ahead and just make that a number. And uh, let's start with this equaling a value of 10. How about? Let's give this a value of 10. That'll be 10 pixels that it's going to be pulling on the boy down every time the frame enters. Okay, so we created our private variable for gravity. Now let's go down to our check direction function again. Now what we want to do is we want to look to see is the boy touching the current platform? Notice we have this for loop and it's constantly checking every time the enter frame happens. It checks to see what platform is this boy currently touching and, we, and then it um, sets the which platform uh, value to whatever he is currently touching. We're going to use that variable and we're going to say if and then remember we, what we want to do is we want to what we're going to do is we're going to see check to see if he is not touching the current platform so whatever the current platform is set to so let's say that the current platform was set to one and if all of a sudden he goes off to the left and walks off the platform, well, will he be touching uh, the current platform, uh, the first platform? No, he won't. So, therefore, we can go ahead and apply the gravity to the boy. So, remember, when you don't want, um, we want something not to equal another, we use another value, we use the exclamation point. That always will be equal means not. So, not hitting, false, or not true, if you want to think about it that way. Always the exclamation point for not. So we're going to look, um, and we're going to talk to the platform array and look at the, look at the which platform position going to be the current platform. Uh, hit test point and against the player's x position dot x and the player's y position and then we have to put that shape flag of true so that it's pixel perfect. And then we uh, go ahead, curly bracket, open curly bracket. What do we want it to do? Well, if he's not touching the current platform, we want to talk to the player's Y position, and we want to add the gravity. Add gravity to it. Start pulling him down. So we got a pretty strong gravity. It's like pulling every 10 pixels, um, but we, you know, we for his up. This is why we have a pretty strong up position when he is jumping up. So when we run this so far, okay. So he's here. He's starting on the first on the first platform. When we push the up, you can see that he comes back down. 
and as you can see when he pulls comes back down now you'll notice that you're starting to get less response and now he's actually starting to go through the platform that's not what we want to do we need to make some amendments to our script um, to help detect when he is has landed back on the platform and uh, to make sure that he stays basically pixel perfect on top of the platform essentially so what we can do is we can add on to this if statement basically saying okay so if he's not on whatever current platform that he's on uh, then the gravity will start to take uh, effect else but if he is else if but if he is on the current platform then let's just go ahead and you know keep what we want to do is we want to basically keep him pixel perfect on that on that platform especially as you know, noticed you know the the uh, you know the shapes are kind of you know squiggly and they're not necessarily completely flat so what we're gonna do is I just said okay platform array which platform which is the current platform testing against the boy open curly bracket closing curly bracket um, and then what we're going to do is um, we're going to actually create a variable that we are going to call the current y and, and this is basically it's a fake out it's a fake out uh, what we want to do is basically as the boy is falling especially when the boy is falling we want uh, the basically whatever the first the first pixel that that boy hits when he is falling and he hits those platform shapes we want him to make sure that he doesn't really go past that shape so um, we're going to create a variable that we're going to call current y and we're going to set it equal to the player's Y position. So, like I said, as he's falling or if he's walking along the platform and he's no longer like touching one, he'll kind of fall down. And then whatever that first pixel is that he hits, we want that to equal the current Y. So we need to actually define this variable of current y up at the top because we're going to you know this is constantly going to be recalculated um, remember this is on a check direction it's on it's on an enter frame so it's constantly doing this check so let's go ahead and create that variable up at the top so up here at the top we will do the private farm and uh, this is called current y number and we're not going to set a, um, a value because that's going to be determined like I said when the boy is falling or um, you know if it's you know whenever he's first hits that platform okay so then we're just going to set the player back to that current y. So like I said, this is kind of just like a fake out on on the player. So as soon as it detects it, it like quickly sets it back to the player. Then um, we want to also, when the player hits that platform, we want to make sure that the jump height is reset because remember when we are pushing that up arrow 
it all of a sudden was getting to the point where it just wasn't even registering anymore. And that's um, because, remember, we every time we hit the up arrow, when the up is true, it keeps on eating away at that jump. So when the boy is uh, jumping, and after he falls down and hits the platform, we want to go ahead and reset that jump height to the initial minus 70. So that way, when he, you start walking along and you want to jump again, you have the full value. You have the full value as soon as he lands one time. So let's go ahead and set that jump height. Equals minus 70. Let's just put a note here. We set the jump height value so that when the boy jumps again from the platform, he has the full value. That way he starts off at least with the full value. Okay, so now, and then let's just maybe make a note up here about the current y. Um, that the current y detects the very first pixel that the boy runs into uh, so that we can Keep the boy. Keep the boy basically right on top is what we were trying to do. Okay, it's a little fake out. Okay, so we have reset the. So now he comes here. Okay, now, so now what do we need to do? Well, when he comes back down. I think we want him to not only have the, so you can see that as we try to, at some point we can't let him, he's not going to jump up anymore, which is what we want. Um, we want him though, when he comes back down and hits the platform, we want him to have his legs come back together for walking. I mean, he can walk, he can walk, and you can see now that when he comes to the end, he falls down, which is exactly what we want. When we come here, he should vote. Oh, I can't move. Jip, but he can jump now. And so now we go over here. Okay, here he is. Boom. Arr, I can't go. All right, so we're going to jump. We're going to jump. Uh, come on, get over there. See, all right, there we go. Lovely. Okay, so now we have all of that working. But we do want our boy that when he comes down, that his legs can come together, you know, even if we're not pushing the left and the right. So along with setting the uh, jump height back to minus 70, uh, what we want to do is we also want to reset uh, his frame number back to 3, which is where we had initially set him. If you remember when we put him right here, uh, brought him onto the stage, new boy, add player, go to and stop three. We're just going to reset it to there. Okay. So, and now we don't want it to always be setting it to that three. We only want it to do it when he has, he has jumped, actually done a jump. So, we what we want to do is we need to create a variable that actually says okay the boy did a jump so let's go ahead and create um, up at the top let's create a boolean we've created a lot of booleans and remember the booleans are wonderful because they can basically tell you when certain states are true so using booleans liberally can really help you in your game creation they can say 
when a certain event has happened. If a certain event has happened, that'll be true. If it hasn't happened, it'll be false. So, and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to create a new variable that I'm calling jumped boolean. And the automatically the automatic default is of course going to be false because he's not starting off in the jumped position. Now what we're going to also want to do is that when we are down here in our key controls for the up along with turning the up to true we also are going to turn the jumped to true because he did jump when we push the up okay so now what we can do is once we have our jumped equal to true when we push the key down now when he is falling here I, and uh, when we want to do that platform detection whether or not he's hitting there we can say if jumped of course that means true if jumped then we can go ahead and tell the player uh, to go to and stop at frame 3 and then we want to we don't want him to constantly be going back to that frame 3 like I was saying so we want to immediately set jumped back to false so once he's hit the platform once he's hit the platform we reset the jump, the jump height, and then we tell if the jump is true, that means he has been coming down from a jump. We set it, go ahead and set it, uh, go to a stop three, and then we don't want it to repeat again because we don't want it to, that's the whole point. We don't want it to keep on being that closed legs because otherwise he won't be able to walk. So uh, we set it to false in that way, you know. As he's on the platform and walking around, whatever the current platform is, uh, this won't be constantly running. Okay, so now we can go ahead and we can run this. And here he is. He's able to walk. He comes back down and it's not detecting there. Let's see if it detects there. And you can see that depending on, all right, why is it not detecting? Let's, let me just do a check here. Okay, so we're going to make one amendment to the jumped variable. Uh, we placed it down here on the keys down for the up and we're just going to move this instead of um, from here which you really only catches it uh, once you press that once it sets it um, but when it comes down it's like it doesn't quite catch it uh, when it comes into here and it immediately sets it to false and it doesn't really you know catch what it's doing so what we need it to do is the whole time we're going to actually place that in this statement for the up where basically the whole time that this statement is true it's going to be uh, the jump is going to be set to true so as long the whole time that this up is true that's going to be also going to be set and and now it's just a lot more it just it has a much easier time of catching it because um, it's just that value is on there for a longer period of time 
And so now we can go ahead and move him around. And you can see that depending on where your point is with the boy is, you know, he might have to even do a jump midway through the through his platform. So it just depends on where your uh, point is. Uh, you might have to do uh, even point, you know, jumps through. Uh, you can see he's not going any place. So even part, part way through the platform on these little bumps, he might have to do a little jump to go on. Now here we're getting to the end of the platform, so now when he comes to the platform, here he goes, he's taking the dive, and no matter, even if I keep pushing the pump up, at some point, you know, he is going to fall. And this is what we want, this is why we changed around the jump height to be constantly taking away just a little bit, because we do want the gravity to take over, we do want him to, we don't want him to be able to fight the gravity and not fall. Um, this would be where, you know, if he got below, this is where, where you could have a little detection where if he got below, uh, you know, the stage height, then you could go ahead and say, you know, you lose, or you could have him take a life away, or something like that. So it's really important that uh, he be able to not fly, <laughs> and that he be able to fall. So... Uh, I think that's it for this particular um, platform. Uh, that should do it for the script. And if you have any other questions, uh, you know I'll be in lab. So, alright.